Aloha, good morning. Today is the 22nd of August. We are back with Stacy to the rescue. <laughs> the name of the show just cracked me up still. But anyway, I am very excited to have a, another very, very distinguished guest today. Senator Dan Akaka. Aloha. Kitty Simons and Don Ariyoshi. So we're here talking about the same thing because it's next week, it's coming up already, about how the ex, uh, proposed expansion of the Papa Hanao Mokua Kea Monument would affect Hawaii adversely and our food supply. Um, and all three people are, you know, we are not for the expansion because, um, well, why don't you tell me why? <laughs> let's, let's share. Senator. Fine. My reason for, for getting involved is when the proposal was made, my question, my first question was, why should we expand? Mm -hmm. And I didn't have any answers. And many other questions appeared after that. So my concern was transparency. Do the people of Hawaii know why we're expanding what it was going to do to Hawaii, uh, to the rights of the state, as well as the, in particular the people of Hawaii and, and the Hawaiians. And uh, also, for me, I felt, well, the rights of Congress, because this really bypasses Congress. And of course, it gives uh, the president the power to, uh, to issue the proclamation, which would set it up as a monument. And of course, another question that came to my mind at the time was, we have a monument. We and, do. And <laughs> that our country and Hawaii has been complying closely with, with what the federal arrangements were. And so my question is, yeah, what are the arrangements in this? as well. So mm. transparency became very, very important to me and I felt the people of Hawaii need to know more about this before a decision should be made. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And uh, so so that was it. And I and besides the rights of the state, the people, and also I coming from Congress, I thought of the expense. I mean, if, and I understood uh, that you could put several states into, into the, the new jurisdiction, the expansion, and if it's going to be that large, mm. what would be the expense to monitor the place and to regulate it? Uh, right. And what's the expense to the federal the government as well as what about Hawaii? Right. So. All of these questions, for me, we needed transparency. And these questions have not been answered. No, they've not been answered. And, and so uh, uh, that has made, been my concern. And, and cost and expenses is another big one that we need to know mm -hmm. about. So that was my huge concern about this. And uh, so I. I talked about it, and so here I am. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, yes, thank you. Maybe you can share a little bit of how Senator got here along with Governor Ariyoshi and Governor Caetano, who wrote the letter. Um, prior, prior to the press release that was done in July 12th, prior to that, there were the Native Hawaiians who were opposing the ban, some of, some of the Native Hawaiians and people in the fish, fishing um, industry. And when Senator Kaka, Governor Ariyoshi, and Governor Caetano put their letter together opposing the expansion of the monument because of states' rights, Native Hawaiian rights, and because of the fishing industry, and all the people of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we price of fish is going to go up. We know that. We don't know how much, but we know when the fishing industry was, when the boats weren't bringing you fish for a period of 40 days, price of tuna went up to $25 a pound. That affects everybody here in Hawaii, especially our seniors who are on fixed income. Mm -hmm. They can't afford to pay prices for those fishes. And if that monument happens, the price of fish will be, wherever it will be, up for ever and ever and ever, I think. 
But when they came together, then the Native Hawaiians, um, the fishing industry, they all came together in a joint effort. And because the momentum is starting to build, you know, we've seen all the letters that come, um, have been written by Colleen Hanabusa, James Dean, Central Pacific Bank, Catherine O. Um, I don't know how many other letters, probably a dozen or so. And these, these letters are all that came out recently because of the momentum of opposing the expansion of the Papa Hanao Mokuakea Monument. But because it started so late, I think the information about the monument and the impact has not been given to the community. So Senator Kaka is talking about, and he's very instrumental because he was one of the um, people who brought the World Congress, Conservation Congress, that's coming in September. He was instrumental in bringing that to Hawaii. So his, his feelings, I think, are very important. And um, so I think that information that he's talking about is correct. It, it needs to be shared. It needs to be understood. What is that permanent impact to Hawaii, to our residents in Hawaii, to our restaurants, to our visitors who come here and the price they're going to pay for fish? I think that all needs to be understood. There is in, the information between the proponents and the opponents are so far apart. So I think we really need to understand the true impact of this before it is implemented and a ban is in place that will be there forever and ever. This ban is half a billion square miles. Wow. Half a billion square miles. I mean, that is huge. Yeah, I saw the map and it's like, the, like a third of the United States, the size of it, something like that. Right. And so, it's bigger than the West Coast, which is crazy. And so our fishermen yeah. wouldn't be able to fish in that area. And they already can't fish in a, cert a smaller area, right? Yeah. For the, the original right. monument so that was created. John, I wanted to ask Don, where should people go to get information about this? Shouldn't they go to Westpac? <laughs> <laughs> we, we're one of them, but is it, there are two other uh, websites. So there's a website, right? Or, a f or two websites? Well, fishing well, is fishing food. Fishing means food. Right, fishing means food. And, and there's a petition, right? Yes. Um, but what should, what else should they do? Um, because actually I understand like there's like 30 of the House members. Our House members yeah. wrote the letter to oppose the expansion as yeah. well. So I think people should know that they should write to their own representatives yes. and senators, and let them know, um, as well as the congressional delegation. Let their voices be heard because yes. otherwise they don't know. Well, there are 30 members of the House that did write a letter. We have a congressional delegation and we have a president who's from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. We also have a governor you know, in Hawaii, um, I think if all those people need to get involved, to come together and say, okay, do they have all the answers of the impacts? I, could, I don't think they do. But first, let me ask you this. Why do we need to have this expansion? I mean, NOAA and Westpac management has been doing such a terrific job in the current monument. Why do we have to expand the monument? They've been recognized. Maybe you can explain some of the recognition of well, Hawaii fishing Right, issues. exactly. But a little bit about governance before. So there, um, the Congress in 1976 mm -hmm. created the Magnuson, well, the Fishery Conservation Management Act, and eight regional councils were established so that uh, this is the first time that the federal government ever approved, I mean, that the Congress ever approved something where decisions are made from recommendations from the bottom up instead of top down. So. Um, the jurisdiction that uh, the council has here is Hawaii, Guam, American Samoa, the Northern Marianas, and the uninhabited islands. So for us, the big difference is the uh, proponents are using something called the Antiquities Act to establish this. And as opposed to the Magnuson Act, which we work under, which we've done fisheries management for 40 years now, it's our 40th anniversary, and we have to follow a whole set of rules, we have to follow NEPA, we have to get out to the public. By the time we send something to the government, the fisheries management uh, amendment that we've done has been vetted through everybody. And so the Antiquities Act, the, the president doesn't have to do any NEPA, he doesn't have to do anything, go out to the public. They could do it if they wanted to. And that's why, as Don said and the senator said, why? Answer the question why. Why go and use that act where no one can say anything about anything? They've had two listening sessions. Uh, what is that? You know, this affects the entire <laughs> Hawaii, not just our fishing. Right. Uh, and I think it's wrong to uh, impact on the fisheries because there is a better way of dealing with closures. 
But the whole world is now at the UN talking about closing the high seas, closing countries, are closing their zones. But we think that's wrong. And, uh, well, and as I understand it, isn't our fishery a world model? Yes. Right? Um, based on the United <laughs> Nations Code of Responsible Fishing, we're like 94% compliant with that code. And no other fishery can say that at this time. Um, so and you are the most reasonable and sustainable recognized fishing program yes. in the world, number one, yes. by the United and Nations. Yes, we're a model fishery that all these uh, their, uh, tuna commissions out there, they're following all of the kinds of ma the management regime that we have, you know, observer coverage, using the vessel monitoring system so that we know our boat, where our boats are, wherever they are. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Hawaii should be proud because that was developed in Hawaii. And now the whole world Yay. uses this vessel monitoring system. So, mm -hmm. you know, tech. we're quite Technology. proud of, uh, of the fishery. And, um, but then, you know, we also are concerned because we also have an indigenous rights committee. So we're concerned about uh, socio-economic communities, everything that really goes along with fisheries. So one of the things, though, that will be horrible, horrible, is right now we Hawaii imports 60% of the seafood we consume, you know, from foreign countries. And what we're trying to do is to reduce that as low as possible. I mean, uh, the United States, you know, our president is is uh, trying to get all of us to to uh, uh, have local management to uh, produce your own products, and we're just going the opposite way if we do this. Yeah. And, you know, they, um, maybe I can go back and look at um, this ban that was put in place. I mean, there's the conservation environmentalists, and there's people who oppose. And we all think conservation is good. I mean, it, it's a good thing. But it has to make sense that it doesn't hurt the people of Hawaii. And this is what we're concerned about. So when you look at Governor Ariyoshi and Governor Cayetano and Senator Kaka's letter, they talk about three things. First of all, Native Hawaiian rights. That to me is very important because what currently you can go in the monument, you can fish, but you can't bring any fish back. Hmm. That doesn't make sense to me. When you quadruple the size of this monument, and they can go in there, but they have to get permits. Now you quadruple the size that they can freely have access to, but they need permits in a wider area now. Mm. You know, I think, I think Native Hawaiian rights should be recognized, should be supported, and their rights should not be diminished. I think that's very important. Secondly is a state right, as Governor Ariyoshi and Gov uh, Senator Kaka talk about is, our ocean is our backyard, it's our resource. Our jurisdiction is not, is three miles, but when you look at that whole monument area, if we're doing something wrong, tell us what we're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. Because the Native Hawaiians to statehood, to our government now, have always taken care of our resources. Don't take it away from us. Tell us what we're doing so we can have access to it, we can enjoy it. It's our culture, it's our recreation, and it's our economy of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Because fishing is the number one sustainable industry in Hawaii. $110 million. Second is cattle, about $69 million. If fishing, some, some of the people who want to support the monument say, yeah, but it's only 6 or 8% of the fish that comes out of there. Well, 6 or 8% is probably that's about $10 million, million dollars, dollars, right? Yes. So yeah. that's $10 million you take from a, from a business whose grandfather, whose father, and now the, um, who, who, who fish. That's all they know. They're like farmers. Mm -hmm. They go out there and fish. You know, you take away $10 million from that industry. That means a 10% cut in for the boats that take it from there to the United Fishery, it gets iced down, it gets packed, it gets delivered, it goes to a restaurant, somebody has to cut it, somebody has to serve it, and eventually the restaurant charges for it. That whole downline is gonna get affected. Mm -hmm. That will impact Hawaii. Oh, so, definitely, without a doubt. Yeah. And, and, and what do people start, come here for? They come for the to eat fish. They come to eat our fish. We have the signature fish. Right. So what are we doing to ourselves for the tourist <laughs> industry? I know, right? So even wait, wait one second. We have to go to a commercial break. Okay. But hold that thought. We will be back with more in a minute on Stacy to the Rescue. Aloha, everybody. My name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We are uh, here live on Mondays at 3 p.m. and we bring guests like our best health coach, Elena Maganto. Uh, it 
well and follow her tips. Viva la comida saludable. Aloha. My name is John Waihe, and I actually had a small part to do with what's happening today. Served actually in public office. But if you don't already know that, here's a chance to learn more about what's happening in our state by joining me for Talk Story with John Waihe every other Monday. Thank you, and I look forward to you're seeing us in the future. Close okay. anything forever. Well, welcome back to they Stacey to the Rescue. For a we are um, yeah. talking about the <laughs> proposed expansion to the Papahanao Mokuakea Monument and how it would harm Hawaii and our food security. So we're here today with Senator Dana Kaka, Katie Simons of Westpac, and Don Ariyoshi of the Ariyoshi Foundation. Um, what were we talking about right before we went to break? I think we're talking on some of the impacts of, of fishing um, uh, or the expansion of the monument, how it will affect our state, right? Which is, you know, it's our backyard. We've been taking care of it. Tell us what we're doing wrong. Mm. And would, you know. And with our tourism industry, too. Yeah. Right? And I as mean, Katie talked about, that we are one of the dollars. best programs in the world being recognized for it because of, of her work with the fishing industry and, and all, the, all the people who are involved in that. Yes. We should be recognized for that. Why are right, we penalizing being, right. our fishermen for doing punished? a great job? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the state of Hawaii is a member of our council. So all these decisions that we've made over the years, the state has a voice. They are, they are a voting member on this council. Oh. oh, what about city and county too? I think I heard Mayor Caldwell was also um, well, the city and county, actually the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands mm -hmm. comes under the jurisdiction of, of Honolulu, not the whole state. Oh. That's yeah, so that's why, you know, we thought he would be interested in, yeah. in being knowledgeable about uh, what's affecting what he's supposed to be in charge of. I know he, he mm -hmm. met with them too, right, the yeah. CEQ when they were here. But I think the, the problem in this whole thing is, um, is that people, the facts are so far apart. So if I just heard the people who um, support the expansion, their facts are different from the people who oppose it. And when I look at the facts from the people who oppose it, it's people who are in the industry, it's NOAA, it's Westpac, it's the, the auction block, United Fisheries, you know, it's a boats. I mean, these are the people that we're talking to. And the facts are different from the people who support the expansion. Mm. So, you know, I, I... I think that's very important to point out. I mean, I was at that meeting, too, and I saw kids talking about, oh, it would be great to save the Earth. Maybe not today, but maybe later. Well, that's why you have... <laughs> like, and you have well, a current monument there that's 400 miles long, yeah. 100 miles wide, and it's doing, what it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Now, when that first monument was established, our, sm our small boat bottom fishing industry went to zero. 350,000 pounds of fish coming to Hawaii went to zero. Wow. Now if you expand this monument to half a billion square miles, what's going to happen to our other fishing industry? That's actually very sad because, you know, for the people who don't know, our bottom fish, that's our signature fish, yes. right? The yes. opaka paka, the onaga, the, those mm -hmm. are the expensive fish, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Wow. And I think, Senator, you had mentioned about you have now an easy zone that's being governed. And now, if you create, a, put a monument and over it, then all those rules that people have worked for, the boats have worked for, are all go away. And now we're totally in control with the, what the federal government tells us what to do in our waters that, that are so important to us. The thing is that, uh, that a monument is really managed by the federal government. Mm -hmm. And this is why the Congress doesn't, well, the state and the people of Hawaii uh, don't have any uh, say on, on what's going to happen. And we need to know all of this mm -hmm. before, before we can support or not support such a move. Mm -hmm. And the other thing we were talking about, you mentioned that the uh, that the, the Hawaiians don't have any special privileges up there in the current monument, which is true, right? They can only do sustenance fishing, which is if you catch a fish up there, you have to eat it there. So we had asked for them to have subsistence, which is what we have in the other monuments throughout the Pacific. 
and with that you can bring back the fish for family and and also to take care of some of your expenses mm -hmm. so if, if this monument is expanded that's just going to continue all the way out to the 200 mile zone so there is nothing special for Hawaiians up there they are on the board but the board can only follow what the proclamation says so you know I, I know that um, some of the OHA uh, trustees have talked about if they if they got a trusteeship there that they'd be able to change some of these things allow for the Hawaiians to bring back their fish but they can't do that unless the proclamation is changed by the president mm -hmm. so I think people ought to remember that like you both said this is forever that's it because another president isn't going to come in and change something <laughs> right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh. and you know I think um, now I know that the governor of the Northern Marianas he was given a mandate on the monuments and it's an unfunded mandate so he had to now wow. create the mandate right it was there's a conservation there and he received received zero monies for it how do you enforce the mandate now because currently under the current monument when our, when our boats are fishing in the EEZ zone, if there's an um, international boat that's coming in, if they see our boats, tend, generally they'll tend to turn away because they're not supposed to be there. Right. Now you're taking our boats and you're putting them into international waters where they gotta travel farther, they have to, the fish will be less fresh because they all gotta, gotta go four times um, farther to sea to catch. It'll increase their cost for gas, you know, and less fish because mm -hmm. there's a greater area that they cannot fish. And the safety to these boats, going out there in more and more deeper waters, it's not safe for them, you know? The other thing I wanted to add to that uh, is that they will then be competing with all the foreign boats that are out there. All the Asian fleets, we, we have a look at some of the enforcement reports from the Coast Guard, and we did want to share them, but they're confidential, so we, oh. we can't share them with the public. But they are right outside our zone, fishing. Mm. Especially, well, we can see them if they have vessel monitoring systems or, or another system. But if they don't, right, we don't, know, we don't know. know if they're in and out, what they're doing, or whatever. So that place is, you know... Uh, a real burden and that it's not scary. fair actually right and actually let's go back to the, the start of this Magnus and Stevens act in the creation of it it was actually to protect our fishing boats that's right? correct it was to move out the foreign fisheries and to develop the United States fisheries in all part of the United States so we seem to be going the other way now that seems weird yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense to me it, it doesn't and right now with the current easy zone it's governed by laws Right? Right. You put a ban over all that, you expand it, all that goes away. I, I just don't understand um, why this ban is good. I like the idea of conservation, but when you actually implement this ban and you see the impacts, I, I don't think people really understand the full extent of this because it hasn't been discussed. Well, I think that um, your point is well taken because all these fishermen are interested in conserving. Yes, because right? they want fish forever. Yeah, right. otherwise how are you going to support Doesn't yourself make sense. tomorrow? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I wanted to add to your point about enforcement and continuing. Um, uh, so two years ago, um, the uh, president uh, established uh, monuments in the Prias. They're part of the U.S., they're part of our jurisdiction. And we actually were invited to the West Wing of the White House to discuss this. And we said that this is not going to work unless you have enforcement. Mm -hmm. So the then uh, Chief of Staff, uh, John Podesta, who is now Hillary Clinton's uh, campaign manager, uh, he promised us that we would have enforcement out this way so he needed to they needed to fund the Coast Guard and the National Marine Fisheries Service well that has never happened mm. that has not happened just like in the Marianas they were promised millions of dollars by the Pew and the government and they have received nothing mm -hmm. so we can't really count on the government to fulfill its promises because obviously this president cannot promise something for the next president to fulfill right right and I, I I hate to see our community coming to the people who support the expansion, people who oppose, and they're just coming like this at each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, how did, when my father was governor and you had a problem, you sat down and you talked about it, you know? And I just don't understand why we can't do this, sit down and talk again. 
you know, it seems with this Antiquities Act, which what that means is the president can just sign a document with his signature and create a ban without any hearing, without any information. He can just do that. And that's what kind of looks, is, doesn't seem right to me, is you want to use that to establish the ban without getting all the information when it's so far apart. You know, yeah, it and affects so many people. Yeah. Right. And I think the conservation are right feeling that they want this because they're, they want to, um, they want things to last for the kids, and it will. I believe it will. But we need to sit down and talk about this um, because it's more than just a concept. Like I said, I support conservation efforts, but it has to be right and make sense. Mm -hmm. Well, our council, yeah, our council uh, wrote to Senator Schatz because it is Senator Schatz's proposal that is being discussed. And um, we asked him to meet with all of us. Well, not just him, his staff, to meet with our staff, to bring everybody together so we could all have this discussion that Don is talking about. Mm -hmm. And we have not re received a response to oh. this date. So that's very... That's um, very disappointing. Very disappointing uh -huh. for, for all of us, you know, because we are his constituents. Right. But you know what people can do? People can call in to the governor, call in to congressional folks, call in our legislators, our council people. If you feel that this is very important and we need to hear about it more, call them because a lot of them don't have the information. Yeah. They also are far apart in the information. But call them and say, let's sit down and talk about it. Let's encourage them to do what's right for Hawaii. Because if we disband goes in place, we can never take it away. It's there for life. Yeah. Do we want to put something in our backyard not knowing the impacts? I don't think so. Does he want to mention the Hawaiian yeah. stuff? Wow. Well, yeah. we're yeah. running out of time. We're out of time. But well, if you want to add last remarks. Right. Yeah. You, were, you were talking to us about how Hawaiians never closed anything forever. That, that's correct. Oh. Uh, and so know, this isn't Pono. OK, but, well, we'll let Senator have the last word. Yeah. And you know, the, the Hawaiian culture and traditions of course, uh, goes way back, and and I many times I feel that what needs to be talked about was how the Hawaiians were scientists yes. in their day. They were scientists, and when you look at at uh, the fish, the plants, they named all of them, and they uh, naturally looked at how this these uh, came about and they followed nature mm -hmm. and uh, to the point where they had, they had taboo systems yes. that kept that going by seasons and, yes. and the amount you can take and all of that. And when I say the amount we can take, uh, in this case of the present uh, um, monument, um, we've, we've complied to, to their, uh, their limits. Mm -hmm. and, but there are so many things that we, we can learn from the Hawaiians. And to provide the Hawaiians uh, with the opportunities mm -hmm. to continue to, to use uh, the ocean right. mm -hmm. and, and the products of the ocean uh, for the future uh, is, is really something that should be regarded in here. We Thank don't you. even know whether it will ever be noticed. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank and, you, Senator. And uh, as you say, once this is uh, signed by the president, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. You can't learn anything yeah. if you can't access that area. That's right. right. And practice. You have to practice. Right.